It was the first theme park to open at the Walt Disney World. Rare literal. Yeah, wow. Okay, this is like take 20. It was at the. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. Hey guys, what's up? It's Disneyland Banana. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to follow me along on all of my Disney and college adventures. You should also follow me on Instagram at Disneyland Banana. So today's video is the first in a series of eight videos that I will be doing, and they are my top five must-do attractions in the Disney parks. So this eight-part series is going to be of the eight Disney theme parks that I personally have visited. So starting with Magic Kingdom, then Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Disney the Animal Kingdom, Disneyland, Disney's California Adventure, Disneyland Paris, and Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. I figured I would start with Magic Kingdom because it is actually reopening after the coronavirus pandemic for the first time. Very stupidly, if I might add, I don't think it should be opening, but whatever, that's not my decision to make. But it is opening this Saturday, July 11th, 2020 to the public. The main idea behind this video is to give first timers a little bit of insight on what they really should try and do while they're in the parks. I'm gonna give you guys like a brief kind of synopsis of what happens in the ride, why I love it so much, and why you should ride it if you've never been to Magic Kingdom before. Just to give a little history first, Magic Kingdom opened to the public on October 1st, 1971. It was the first theme park to open at the Walt Disney World. Real world. Okay, this is like take 20. It was at the... <laughs> Oh my god, I can't. It was the first theme park to open at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Magic Kingdom is what you would call a castle park. It is called a castle park because there is a gigantic castle as the park's icon, right smack dab in the middle of Magic Kingdom. Cinderella Castle is huge and it is absolutely stunning. Magic Kingdom is home to a bunch of different themed lands, all sorts of different movie genres like adventure, western, fantasy, futuristic sci-fi. Magic Kingdom is like the classic Disney park. It's beautifully built. It's just everything is so amazing there. <laughs> I don't even know like how to describe it. Um, you literally feel like you are transported into different worlds in each and every land that you go into. So to start off, my five must do Disney attractions at Magic Kingdom. I have to go with one that I feel like you have to put it on like a must do list now. Um, number five is gonna be Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So Seven Dwarfs Mine Train opened with New Fantasyland at the Magic Kingdom in 2014. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is a family friendly type of roller coaster. It is themed to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Really, really well themed. They have this whole area dedicated to it. There's like these big like mountains made out of like these rocks and there's grass growing on them and trees. It's so beautiful. And then you can see like entrances to the mine shafts and then you see all these mine carts whipping around on them. And the mine carts are super cool themselves because they actually like, they sit there and they like swing as you turn, which is like super unique. And then the theming like on the ride itself is really cool because it is so like new. They have all these like super high tech, amazing animatronics of the seven dwarves and like they're really, really cool. So they have like these projected faces. They're super expressive and I don't know. It feels like they're om they almost look real, but like in an animated way, it's hard to describe, but like they're so amazing. And then of course, like Snow White is a classic. It is the class. It's the original Disney film. Like, of course you have to have a Snow White ride. So I think it's really, really well done. Um, the track is also super smooth because it is only six years old. And the reason it is at number five is because it always has a long wait because it is still relatively new and it's such a cool ride. It's always above a 90 minute wait. Good luck getting a fast pass for that ride because it's literally impossible. And if you're gonna wait in standby, have fun waiting for two hours because that's usually what the wait is. The other like downside of the ride is it's pretty short. It feels like as soon as the ride starts, it's like over just as quickly, um, especially after waiting for so long in line. It is fun. It's a great experience. If you've never been to Magic Kingdom before, I highly recommend you go on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, but it always has a really long wait, so just be prepared ahead of time for that. Number four on my list of must-do attractions at Magic Kingdom is the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion opened with Magic Kingdom on October 1st, 1971. Haunted Mansion is located in Liberty Square at Magic Kingdom. The Haunted Mansion, if you don't know what it is, it's a dark ride. It is like a ride that's slow moving, it has physical sets, I don't really know how to describe it, I'll put clips of it in here so you can see, but the Haunted Mansion is 
themed around 999 happy haunts who decided to retire in this beautiful old mansion. The haunted mansion in Magic Kingdom is so well themed. The outside they just redid, I can't remember what year that was. It was within the last 10 years though. They redid the whole like queue outside, which is super fun, especially when there's a long wait because for some reason, all the rides at Disney World always have like two hour waits. I'm not here for it. I like Disneyland because like, you can walk onto stuff, but anyway. We're talking about Magic Kingdom, not Disneyland, Hannah. But once you're inside the Haunted Mansion, there's the famous ballroom scene. It's beautiful. You should definitely ride it. Even if it's just for that scene, it's supposed to be like Haunted Mansion and it sounds scary or whatever, but really there's like all sorts of these like little gags if you look out for them and they're actually pretty funny. I love riding Haunted Mansion because there's always something new to see. If you've never been to Disney World before, if you've never been to Magic Kingdom or even to Disneyland, but we'll get there in a different video, I 100% recommend that you go on Haunted Mansion. I don't know why it's not higher on the list. I love Haunted Mansion. It's not a thrill ride maybe? Ride the Haunted Mansion. Taking the number three spot on my list of must-do attractions at Magic Kingdom is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened at Magic Kingdom in 1980. Thunder Mountain Railroad is located in Frontierland in Magic Kingdom. It is a roller coaster. I think Disney like advertises it as a family friendly roller coaster, but like if you have little, little kids, they're not gonna like this. I didn't like Thunder Mountain Railroad until I was a teenager. Um, I was also a wimpy kid, so that's probably why. It can be a little jerky, but it honestly, like, so Thunder Mountain Railroad is like this almost 40, is it a 40 year old roller coaster? Was 1980 40 years ago? I don't know. I wasn't born yet. How long ago was 1980? It was 40 years ago. All right, Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disney World is 40 years old, and I don't think they've ever replaced the track. So like, that's a 40 year old roller coaster. So of course it's gonna be a little jerky. When you walk up, you see like these huge towering mountains, and they're just they look so amazing. And you board onto this like train. My biggest tip is sit in the back. It's super fun. Just trust me. Don't ask questions. Ask the cast member. You want to sit in row 15. Trust me. Once you're on board the train, you enter into these like caverns. It's really cool. Then you kind of like head out of this cavern and you see all these different like mines and you fly through the mountain and it's so much fun. You're going super fast. You're whipping around from side to side. It's just, oh my god, it's so much fun. Highly recommend if you like roller coasters, if you like thrill rides, if you like going fast, then Route Railroad is a ride for you. <laughs> at number two on my list of must do attractions at Magic Kingdom is Space Mountain. Space Mountain opened in January of 1975 in the Tomorrowland section of Magic Kingdom. Space Mountain is a fully enclosed, pitch black roller coaster. It's absolutely terrifying, but also so much fun. At Magic Kingdom, there are two tracks to the Space Mountain. There's Alpha and Omega. Each one, I think they're like mirror images of each other. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they're almost identical, but they're mirror images. You go through this whole like crazy winding drops and turns and all these wild things and it's all happening in the dark. It's so much fun. You wouldn't think like going on a roller coaster in the dark would make that big of a difference, but when you can't really see like what's in front of you, it makes it that much scarier. And honestly, I think if you rode Space Mountain like in the light, it would still be fun, but I don't think it would be nearly as like thrilling because you could see what's coming. Space Mountain is also like Thunder Mountain Railroad. It is old, it's like, 45 years old. She's seen better days. It's still super fun. Um, yeah, it's, it is jerky though, and you will kind of feel like you threw your back out. I feel like every time I get off Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom, I'm just like, what just happened to me? Um, but it's worth it. That doesn't make it sound fun, but it's like, <laughs> it's really fun, I promise. If you're going to Magic Kingdom for the first time, you have to do Space Mountain. It is a Magic Kingdom classic. And finally, last but not least, you cannot forget the best attraction at Walt Disney World as a whole, the People Mover! Yeah, you thought I was gonna say something else, didn't ya? No, but seriously, the People Mover. That ride has my entire heart. It is the simplest attraction you could possibly think of. It's just little cars going around on a track around Tomorrowland. It's not thrilling. It's not like super well themed. It's, you know, it's not like immersive or anything like the newer attractions are, but the people mover, you guys, you have to do it if it's your first time at Magic Kingdom. You have to do it if it's your second time at Magic Kingdom. You have to do it if it's your 100th time at Magic Kingdom. You have to do the Tomorrowland Transit Authority people mover. End of story. So the people mover opened in 1975 at Magic Kingdom. It was the second version of the people mover. 
The first one opened at Disneyland back in 1967 with the addition of New Tomorrowland. Unfortunately, Disneyland's people mover did close, so the Magic Kingdom one is kind of all we've got now. So don't take it for granted. Go ride the people mover. <laughs> It is like these little cars that are all kind of connected into these like chains of I think there's like five or six cars on each chain. The People Mover takes you on a scenic tour of Tomorrowland. It has some of the best views in all of Magic Kingdom. You can see, of course, all across Tomorrowland. You can watch the fireworks, which I have done from People Mover before and it is incredible. I think the coolest thing about the People Mover is like getting to see all of the attractions while you're going around on this loop. So you start off and you get to see a model of Progress City, which was the inspiration for Epcot. It's like a real piece of like Disney history sitting right there like on the People Mover that like most people would miss if they just, you know, don't ride the People Mover. We see in Tamiki's Star Traders, you get to go inside of Space Mountain. Yeah, so pro tip, if you want to see Space Mountain with the lights on, go ride the People Mover when it says Space Mountain's temporarily closed. I will include my clip real quick right here. After you see Space Mountain, you go out and you get to watch like the Astro Orbiter, and then you go past the Carousel of Progress, and then you go inside, you get to look down into Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blast, oh wait, what is it called there? It's not Astro Blast, it's Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Fun fact about the People Mover is that it never stops moving. When you go up onto the platform, it is like a rotating platform. You then step onto the People Mover as it is also rotating around this platform at the same speed, and then it takes off and goes like however fast it goes. The People Mover is great for a super relaxing trip around Tomorrowland. It's a great way to put your feet up because trust me, when you're going to Disney World for a few days, you will be exhausted. Your feet are gonna be killing you. You're just gonna wanna sit down for a little bit. People Mover is perfect for that. There's never a long wait. Usually you can walk right on, sit down. Also a great place to escape the rain because it's got a roof over the top of it. So you will not get wet when you're on the People Mover. <laughs> Some quick honorable mentions that I feel like I need to mention. Magic Kingdom Classics, the three animatronic shows that are at Magic Kingdom, the Carousel of Progress, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, and the Country Bear Jamboree. All three of these shows are so fun, they're so Disney, they're so Magic Kingdom to me. A trip to Magic Kingdom is not complete without seeing at least one of those shows. So if it's your first time in Magic Kingdom, do one of those. They're so cute. If you guys know me at all, if you've watched any of my old videos, you know that Splash Mountain is my favorite ride. When I heard about the change coming to Splash Mountain, that they are changing it from the Song of the South theme to Princess and the Frog, I was a little like heartbroken at first and I was like, oh my god, like that's my favorite ride, like how are they changing it? First Soarin' Over California, then Tower of Terror, then Paradise Pier, and now it's Splash Mountain too. Ah! You know, like just crazy Disney fan. That's what came out of me at first. But then I was like, hold on, let me think about this for a second. Song of the South is a horrible movie. It's super racist. It should not exist. And especially not in a theme park with like so much diversity, people for visiting from all over the world. Like it is just not appropriate to be in a theme park. So I 100 and 10% agree with Disney's decision to get rid of Song of the South out of Splash Mountain. Like, goodbye. My only like skepticism with it is that Princess and the Frog, I don't know how that's gonna fit in with Frontierland at Magic Kingdom, but I'm actually like really excited to see how they're gonna like fit it in. I think at Disneyland, the change is gonna like work better because it's right next to New Orleans Square. And I'm really excited that Tiana's getting more representation in the parks. And I think that the ride's gonna be amazing. Like it's still gonna be a log ride. It's still gonna like help out on those hot Florida days. I just, I don't know how they're gonna fit it into Frontierland in Magic Kingdom, but I'm really excited to see how they're gonna do that. Also the music from Princess and the Frog is amazing. So I know that it's gonna be great. And I am really excited to see that new attraction, which, Again, if you know me at all, I'm usually not excited for new attractions because I'm like, they took my favorite ride, meh, 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 meh. But this time I am really, I am genuinely really, really excited to see what they do with the retheming of Splash Mountain. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Shoot me a comment and tell me your must-do attractions at Magic Kingdom. Did I miss anything? I would love to know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see the upcoming videos in this series. I will hopefully be posting them relatively soon. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you real soon. Bye!